Hey everyone, today we're going to do a walkthrough of leak code number 91, decode ways. Let's get into it. So the problem description is pretty simple. We're given an encoding where A maps to 1, B maps to 2, and so on until Z maps to 26. And we're told to return the number of ways a string of numbers can be decoded to a string of letters. Alrighty, so I'll cut to the chase and spoil the ending for you. This is a DP problem. Well, why? Well, DP problems have the characteristic traits that combining the results of subproblems will help you arrive at the final answer. Now that, seem, now, that may seem like a really trivial fact, but it's actually not true for all problems. See my video on Sudoku Solver for an example. But for this problem, let's look at this string, xxx123. Now, if I told you that there are two ways to decode 23, and there was one way to decode the 3, could you tell me how many ways there are to decode 1, 2, and 3? Well, yes, you can. The answer is just 2 plus 1. Why? Well, if 1 were treated as an independent digit, then the number of options we have is 2, which is just 1 with 23 and 1, 2, 3. Right? This is the same number of options we have as decoding 2 and 3 alone. Now, similarly, if we were to decode 1 and 2 as 12, then we would have just one option, 12 and 3, which in this case is also the same number of options as just decoding 3 alone. And so, if you want to look at the number of ways to decode the entire string 1, 2, 3, we have 1, 2, 3, 1 and 2, 23, and 12 and 3, which, and you can see that the green corresponds to decoding 1 as a single digit, and the yellow corresponds to decoding 1 and 2 as 12. So naturally, just by stating that in plain English, we can actually start defining our recurrence relation, which I highly recommend you do even if you're under time pressure in an interview. Your interviewer will really appreciate you planning things out ahead of time instead of jumping right into the code. We'll say that dpi is equal to the number of decodings from s of i to sn, where s or n is the length of the string. The number of decodings, assuming that si was used as a single digit, should be dpi plus 1, because if there are x ways to decode si plus 1 to n, then tacking on one extra leading letter to the front is not going to change the number of ways we have to decode the string. And as expected, dpi plus 2 is going to represent the case in which we decode both si and si plus 1 as a single letter. Now, there are a couple finer points to make here. If the current number is a 0, we actually need to set dpi to 0 because the problem description states that we cannot have a leading zero as a valid decoding. And this is consistent with our human readable description of the problem as well, since there are zero ways to decode a substring that begins with a zero. The other things we need to keep in mind is that we can only decode the ith and i plus oneth number as a letter if s i begins with a one or two. Furthermore, if s of i is a two, then s i plus one cannot be larger than six, because the range of two-digit numbers we have is only from 10 to 26. But yeah, other than that, this DP problem is pretty much done for. We can still make an additional optimization, but I'll show you how to do that in the code. All right, so first let's start with the non-optimized DP code we just described. We'll first hard code the zero case to return zero ways to decode. Otherwise, we initialize a DP array with a zero for every letter in S. We'll also add a one to the very end of the array. This is to handle the case in which the final two digits of s are between 10 and 26. Okay, now before I go any further, I want you to stop and really think about what I just said. If that didn't make any sense to you, pause the video. If you're still lost after thinking about it, I'll reveal the answer in 3, 2, 1. If the final two digits of s are between 10 and 26, then according to our definition of the DP array, the number of ways to decode sn minus 2 is going to be dpn minus 1 plus dpn. Since n is the length of the string, we would get an out-of-bounds exception if we tried indexing dpn without ad adding this additional 1 here at the end. Alrighty, then we need to initialize our other base case. We should set dp of n minus 2 to 1 if the number in s is not equal to 0. Otherwise, we set it to 0. And by the way, a quick note, in Python, you can actually turn true. If you evaluate int of true, you get 1, and int of false is equal to 0. Also, note that I'm using negative indexing here. Uh, dp of negative 1 is equivalent to dp of 
length of s minus 1, and dp of negative 2 is equivalent to dp of length of dp minus 2. So, uh, once again, let's think about how this is reconciliable with the plain English definition of dp of i. If the last number of the string is a 0, then how many ways can you decode the last number to a letter? The answer is 0, because we can only decode numbers 1 to 26. And then, once that's out of the way, we can start our iteration from n minus 2. We'll just keep going until i is negative. We'll code exactly what we said we would. If s of i is 0, we set dpi to 0. Otherwise, we'll set dpi to dpi plus 1, because if it's not 0, we know that the ith letter can at least be decoded as a single digit number. And then, we need to check whether the ith letter can be decoded as the first digit of a two digit number. So that means that si must either be a 1 or si is a 2, and the number next to it is a number from 0 to 6, right? Because that would represent numbers 20 through 26. If those conditions are true, then we additionally add dpi plus 2 to dpi, because that means we can interpret the ith letter as both a single and a double digit number. Finally, we just decrement i, and outside this loop, we can return dp0, safely knowing that dp0 has been populated with the correct value. Okay, so this code actually works, and it also beats a decent number of submissions. But you have to ask yourself before concluding, can we do better? In this case, the answer is... Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Right, and this is a really important exercise, because an interviewer will likely ask you a follow-up question when you complete the problem. Now, let's take a look at this dp recurrence because this is a super common trick. Notice that the definition for each dpi entry is only reliance on dpi plus 1 and dpi plus 2. That means that we actually don't need dpi plus 3 or dpi plus 4 and so on. We really don't need this entire dp array. If we only need i plus 1 and i plus 2 to determine i, then we, just, we can just have two variables to represent those values instead of wasting space in defining an entire array. So let's say that dp0 represents dpi, dp1 represents dpi plus 1, and dp2 represents dpi plus 2. So we'll define dp2 to be 1 and dp1 to be 1 if the last number is not 0. Then in this loop, we'll simply replace dpi with dp0, and we'll, we'll replace dpi plus 1 with dp1, and dpi plus 2 with dp2. At the end of each loop, we reset dp0 to 0, dp1 to dp0, and dp2 to dp1 because the relative positions of these will change on the next iteration once i is decremented. Finally, at the very end of this loop, we return dp1. Now stop and think for a moment. Why am I not returning dp0? Pause the video, and I'll reveal the answer in 3, 2, 1. The answer is that when i is 0, that's going to be our final loop, and we're going to set dp0 to 0 and dp1 to dp0 in preparation for the next loop. However, on the next loop, i will be negative 1, so the loop will terminate with dp0 set to 0 instead of the actual value that we want. You can also think of an example in which we have a string with length 1. In that case, we would define dp2 and dp1 up here in our base cases, but we would never enter the while loop, in which case dp0 would be undefined. The answer for a length 1 string would also be dp1. Alrighty, so that's how you do this problem in just a few lines of code and beat 99% of users. Your takeaway from this problem should be that planning ahead of time and defining your base, your recurrence relations and base cases to yourself should not be a burden. It should be something that makes your life a whole lot easier and also impresses your interviewer. If you found this helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.